All right, Ronan MMA, welcome back to this channel. Now, Ian, I've said it before, Gary, or pardon me, dude, Ian Machado Gary, because we cannot forget his wife's last name, has seemingly gone crazy, lost his mind, is completely delusional, whichever way you want to put it. In a recent interview with Ariel Hawani, he said that he believes he is carrying UFC 292 on his back and that people would not care for this card if he was not on it and I think the quote was that it would go down the drain then he was asked about this at media day where he doubled down shocking to you Ian but you got the fans talking you confidently said something that riled some people up good you said earlier this week I believe that I'm carrying this 292 card on my back and that if it wasn't for me this card would go down the drain what, what do you say to those people who think you're crazy for saying that who in good fuck is waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning in Europe, or the rest of the world for that matter, to watch Aljamain Sterling and Sean O'Malley. They're waiting up for me. I can promise you that. They're waking up for me. They're staying there, they're tuning in for me because I'm a superstar in Europe. I've got an Irish nation behind me and a Brazilian nation behind me now, and I'm excited to go out there and show that I am a superstar. And what I want to talk about is, number one, why what he said was actually stupid but i do want to point out that he has done a very good job at getting people talking about him okay because every single mma youtuber or content creator whichever way you want to put it has done a video on him i see thumbnail after thumbnail after thumbnail of ian carey being delusional so if his goal was to get people upset to get people riled up to talk about him he has done a good job but he said that you know who is waking up at five in the morning in Europe to watch Aljamain Sterling versus Sean O'Malley. Well, number one, the UFC doesn't really care about that fan base all that much, okay? Otherwise, they would make it at a more, um, you know, it, they would make it at a more convenient time for them to watch. They don't really care unless the card is being held there. They don't care that you have to wake up at five o'clock in the morning, and they, they they just don't because in the UK. They don't even really need to purchase pay-per-views. They get it with like a BT subscription. You know what I mean? And then in Ireland, where they do purchase pay-per-views, at least from my understanding, it costs about 30 euros, which, it, you know, converts to 32.67 USD, which makes us fans over here in the Americas very, very, very angry because we pay $65, $70, whatever it is, every single month and even a couple times a year twice a month to watch these fights but that's why the ufc cares the most about the fan base in the americas that's why all of the times are convenient for people in the americas and honestly dude more uh, specifically it's the united states they don't canada they don't really care about i would imagine they don't sell a whole lot of pay-per-views here but regardless dude that fan base isn't like the biggest fan base that fan base isn't going to make or break a pay-per-view event, okay? And that's assuming that he's actually correct and that they are waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning to watch him. Now, I know that Instagram followers are not everything, but I would like to point out that there are multiple individuals from top to bottom on this card, some not even on the main card, that have a bigger following than him, okay? Chris Weidman is fighting on the prelims. He's a little upset about it. He's got almost three times the following on Instagram that Ian Machado Gary has. He's a legend in the sport. I actually think he's going to beat Brad Tavares. Way bigger following, way more popular. If I'm being honest, dude, I'm more excited to see what Natalia Silva does, Tandria Lee, than I am excited to see Ian Machado Gary versus Neil Magny. Okay. Marlon Chito Vera has almost got three times the amount of followers on Instagram that Ian Machado Gary has. And now we're on the main card. You know what I mean? Zhang Wei Li's got more than double. And then both parts of the main event in Aljamain Sterling and Sean O'Malley. Aljamain Sterling's got about double what Ian Machado Gary has. Sean O'Malley has near 10 times the amount of Instagram followers that Ian Machado Gary has. If you were to break this event up into two types of fan bases, right? The more casual fan base and the more hardcore fan base. The hardcore fan base are buying the shit regardless. They don't care who's on it. They're excited that the championship's being put on the line. They're excited that Zhang Wei Li's fighting. They're excited to see uh, Cheeto versus Pedro Munoz. They're excited. You know what I mean? All these things. Because they get excited about all the fights. The casual fan base are 100% this time around here for Sean O'Malley. It is what it is. Now, I will point out Ian Gary has, sorry, Ian Machado Gary, it's 
tricky one for me. Um, I also want to point out, last time I, I poked fun at that, a lot of people, uh, not a lot, but some people in the comment sections got upset, saying that him taking his wife's name was, was a very noble thing. He did it for a very noble reason, and blah, 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 blah. Perhaps. I, for one, am of the opinion that if his wife's last name was Smith, I think I just spat. I don't know if you could see that. His wife's last name, if, if her last name was Smith, right, as opposed to Machado, I don't think he's taken that last name in on as part of his own, right? Machado is a very famous name in the combat sports world. So if she had a name that was completely irrelevant, I don't know that he would have taken it, but that's just pure speculation, you know, a little bit of selfishness perhaps, regardless. Um, the casual fan base are buying this shit for Sean O'Malley. They're not buying it for you. Now, I do believe that this has gotten ramped up because he did just sign a deal with Better Media, which is Jake Paul's media company, and this is extremely uh, familiar. This feels very familiar to me. When Patty Pimlet and Molly McCann signed with Barstool Sports, they ramped their cringeness up to a million, okay? Because the fastest way to get a lot of attention is to make people fucking hate you. Now, I also want to point out that I truly, truly wish that the media members would stop making Conor McGregor comparisons as soon as they have a guy that sounds anywhere fucking similar to him, because I don't think it's fair to these fighters and i think it does something to their brain we will never see another conor mcgregor again ian gary is not a, a conor mcgregor patty pimlet is not a conor mcgregor okay they're just not but when they the, the media tells them this over and over and over again i feel like it fucks with their head and then they think oh i can act like conor mcgregor even though he's kind of earned the right to act the way that he acts maybe not the way that he acts outside of the cage nowadays but the way that he would sell fights he earned that shit okay these guys haven't I also want to say that I do, I don't, the, the Patty Pimlet comparison here is not necessarily a one-to-one -one because in my opinion, Ian Gary doing what he did to Daniel Rodriguez is what Patty Pimlet was supposed to do to Jared Gordon, okay? He's kind of already passed his test, so this is going to be a good test. I will say he's got no easy matchups ahead of him, um, but as far as skill goes, I think he is a far more skilled fighter than patty pimlet but this is a risky strategy okay as i said got a ton of people talking about him but if you go out there and put on anything less than a spectacular uh, a spectacular performance pardon me people are gonna fucking rake you over the coals for the way that the that uh you were acting now i don't think it's as deep as saying that he's like disrespecting all these guys on i think he's literally just trying to make people mad about him but it's completely fucking delusional to think that there are more people paying attention to this card for you than they are for Aljamain Sterling, Sean O'Malley, Marlon Chito Vera, Zhang Weili, Chris Weidman, all of these phenomenal, well-established fighters that um, are near and dear to a lot of our hearts. You know, I mean, Chris Weidman, dude, I, you know, it, it, seeing him come back after, it's fucking inspirational, dude. That was one of the worst leg breaks we've ever seen, ever. It might be the worst one. His bone was literally sticking out the back of his calf. Do you know what I mean? I bet you there's more people um, intrigued, whether or not they're nervous about it, uh, in Chris Weidman's return than they are seeing you fight Neil Magny. Okay, so, I know, you know, as I said, he's slightly delusional. He did a good job getting people to talk about him, so credit to him if that was his, uh, his only goal there. But, regardless, let me know what you guys think about Ian Machado, Gary, in the comment sections down below. If you're still happy for him, or... If you think he sounds like a fucking mongrel, like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. I will see you at the next video. Bye-bye.